hey y'all welcome back to another video in this video we will be working with african print fabric i do have a few different prints that i'm going to be working with um we're going to be making the african print javits um and it's a very simple design but as you can see these african print fabrics do have different finishes for example this one has more of a waxy finish that way you can tell which one is your main side and which one is your wrong side you see the wrong side is a little duller and this one is waxy so very easy to tell wrong side and right side whereas this one if you look at the right side and look at the wrong side they look fairly similar but the way to tell which one is the right side is taking a look at the um, edge of your fabric. If the writing is uh, legible, that'll be your right side. And if you can't read it on the other side, then it's going to be your wrong side. And I usually take my chalk pen and I mark my wrong side so that I will know the difference between the two so as I'm cutting you will see me pulling out that chalk pen and marking so it'll be easy for me to differentiate between the right side and the wrong side all right so we're gonna get started I'm gonna take this beautiful fabric here and I'm going to open it up Alright, so as you can see, I'm looking at my edge and I can read that side, so I know that this is my right side. So I'm going to fold right side to right side, and that way I will be working with my wrong side facing me. I'm going to be sure to fold it equally. If you have pattern weights, I highly recommend that you use your pattern weights to hold your fabric in place. I was being lazy and just used whatever was next to me. Okay, so here I'm folding my fabric to make my width 10 inches. My width is going to be 10 inches going across, and I'm just going to take it all the way down the length of my fabric to be sure it's 10 inches all the way down, so to be even. Okay, so here I'm just going to double check that my width is in fact 10 inches and as you can see I did pin it in place so that it wouldn't move. And so now we're going to work on the length of our fabric. The length of our fabric should measure 15 inches going down. If you want it to be um, longer, you can make it longer, but 15 inches seems to be a pretty decent length for me. And I'm just going to mark it all the way across. And as you can see here, I'm going to mark it all the way across. Alright, as you can see, I am marking the wrong sides of my fabric as well. So that when I get to cutting my fabric, I... Um, we'll know which side is the wrong side and which one is the right side so I'm sitting here and I'm realizing that I will need to cut two of the same pieces out 
So to make it easier on myself, I'm going to fold this in half again. So there I go, marking the other half of the wrong side. Um, because I'm going to fold it right there where I made that line marking. So now I'm going to have four layers of fabric. And I'm going to cut it into this rectangle so that when I cut the neckline, I'll automatically have my two pieces that I need. Okay, so this is the piece that we're going to work with. Right there at that line, we're also going to cut that in half so that we will have two pieces of fabric um, just placed on top of itself. All right, so now we're gonna work on our neckline. Right there in the corner, we are gonna measure five centimeters. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna mimic what a circle skirt pattern would look like. So you're going to cut out the corner in a circle five inches all the way around. So that corner should be five inches. So now we're going to just curve this side here. Um, it's gonna mimic like a um, miniature train in a way. If you've ever made a train, a skirt with a train, um, you'll know what that pattern looks like, but the top portion is gonna be significantly smaller than your uh, folded edge. And you're just gonna make a slight curve going all the way around and then you're gonna cut on that curve you can even use like your um, shoulder ruler if you have one just to make the curve but you just want it to look like it's giving a gradual um, effect All right, and if you cut this out like me, you should end up with two identical pieces of fabric. You should already have your wrong size of your fabric labeled. So you're just gonna open it up and you're gonna position right side to right side. With this type of fabric, pinning is not necessary, but if you need to pin it um, just to make yourself make it easier on yourself, you do that. But what you're gonna go do is you're going to measure starting at the top, going all the way around, and then you're gonna stitch it at that top, but you're gonna leave the neckline open. You're not gonna stitch that. So just on the right side, going all the way around and stitching on that left side.
All right, so once I'm done stitching the border that I need to stitch, I'm just gonna go and I am going to clip my excess fabric and I'm also gonna clip my corners so that when I turn my fabric out, it'll be easy for me to point my corners. So that's all that I'm doing on this point. All right, so now we're gonna turn our jabbets onto the right side. Um, and it's starting to come together. You can start seeing the shape of our jabbet, but you wanna be sure that you make sure those corners are pointed and you pull everything to the edge. So just turn it out to where the right side of the fabric is now facing you. All right, so once you are sure that your edges are to the very edge, you can press your jabbit if you want to, but do not use direct heat from the iron. Be sure that you place a towel in between your jabbit and your iron, and then just allow the steam to press your jabbit. So right here, I am placing my uh, jabbit in half and I want to mark where my halfway mark is so I'm just adding a little clip there because when I start to fold my jabbit in place you like for it to be precise or as precise as possible so I like to find my halfway mark just to be sure so that's all that I'm doing here so now I'm going to go ahead and start shaping. I'm going to start folding and shaping my jabbing in place. And I'm going to just let you watch it because it's hard to explain. You just kind of have to watch to see what I'm doing. And it's completely up to you how many ruffles you want on your jabbit. That's completely up to you. If you wanted two of them, just make two. If you wanted five, figure out how you want to do five. However many ruffles you want, it's totally up to you. Just make it into something that you like and you love. Make sure you love the shape of your jabbit.
Okay, so I just examine my jab it just to be sure I like it. And I do flip it on the other side because believe it or not, this type of jab it you can wear on either side and it still looks and wears very nicely. If you decide that you don't like the placement of your ruffles, go ahead and make as many necessary adjustments as you possibly can because once you have everything placed, you are going to top stitch that top curve so that these pieces can stay in place. Once you love the shape of your jabbit, you are gonna go and you're gonna top stitch that curve and keep it as a curve because it's gonna lay right there at the curve of your neck. So it's gonna be just fine. So just go and top stitch that curve. All right, so once I clip my edges, as you can see here, it is starting to make shape and I'm loving it. So next we are going to attach the neck band and the neck band is about, I would say um, one and a half, anywhere from one and a half to three inches long, um, depends on how thick you want your band. Um, I didn't want my band to be too thick, so I think I made mine about one and a half inches. So I'm just going to clip where the middle is so that the uh, band will be pretty um, even as I stitch it on there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the band in place. Um, I'm going to top stitch right there where I top stitched before. I'm going to pin it in place. And then once it's all pinned in place, you're going to take it to the machine and go really slow. And you're going to top stitch right beneath that other top stitch that you did before right there that curve so you just want to be sure that you fuse that neck um, band and your jab it together okay once I stitch it all I'm gonna do is fold my band onto itself so double fold it onto itself to where it builds a casing just like this um so i'm going to baste it and then do that so after doing that it should look something like this and what i use i use these like uh swimsuit hooks is what they're called to um place on my jabbits and I place the hook on one end and then I'm gonna make really small loops 
on the other end so that it can be adjustable. So different um, little, I guess, sections in my fabric so that it can hook onto each other. So after doing all of that, it's gonna look like this. I've already made another one so you can see. It's gonna hook onto it like this so that way it can be adjustable and it's not too snug but yet it's snug enough to stay in place and I like these really thin bands because it works under whatever neckline that you decide to wear it with and however long you want your um, band is totally up to you um, I don't want them that long so I did not make my straps that long All right, so again, at this point, I'm gonna press it. And again, do not use direct heat. Make sure you have a towel in between your jabbit and then you iron it and it's gonna lay flat just like this. And I wanted to show you what it would look like if you were to put it on like a shirt. It looks just like this. This is just another print. Very, very cute, very stylish. I love it.